So today we've got a 25 top. It is fortified, inspiring, grievous, and encrypted. So we're going to start off by uh, skipping past this pool. Uh, ideally, you normally want to use like either a shroud or a mind soothe um, or an imprison. Generally, if you use just a para with a ring, it doesn't actually work. It'll still actually aggro. Um, here we have two monks, so we were able to double ring it there. But uh, take control of the Bloodhorn and then pull into their pack. Spawn the Ur. Uh, make sure we get my you know, pot going off right there. Um, and once the Ur relic is dead, we can go ahead and start targeting the Bloodhorn and make sure it's dead. Now, before the uh, pool starts, obviously you want to talk to your rogue or your hunter or your druid, whoever's in your group that's going to be taking care of soothes. Because if that Bloodhorn's going through and you don't uh, get a soothe off, on the rampage that it does, um, it's really going to kill you unless the uh, healer's prepared with like a bunch of cooldowns. So have that set up. Now, uh, during this pool, generally, I'm just kicking Searing um, Deaths as they come out. You can get every other as a tank. Um, and then I'm just trying to watch my ranged or melee DPS for when they get targeted by the extra ad that stuns them for a couple seconds. Uh, as a monk, you actually have a lot of utility that works with these. You can ring a piece of them if they're far away, you can paralyze them if they're within 25 yards, if they're right next to a melee, you can leg sweep them. I haven't actually tried, but I'm pretty sure if they're uh, between 5 and 30 yards away, you can probably clash them as well, uh, which is pretty nice. Um, but lots of different things to take care of that. But yeah, you can see just kind of bursting here. Uh, it's only been a minute and a half, and these the entire pack's almost dead. Like generally pumping like even me right now I'm doing like 25k it's actually ridiculous but minute 35 done so from here you've got three paths to choose right in in top uh, generally I'm gonna go towards the dueling wing that's the wing that you know has the boss that sends two people out to, to duel I don't know what it's called I call it the dueling wing you know whatever uh, but generally in here I'm gonna pull the first three pack um, and then one of the champions uh, that's in there and start off that way. There's a couple other things you can do from there, but uh, generally I like to pull that, and then I like to go towards the portal wing. So, as soon as we land, position myself, figure out where the heck I'm going, uh, and grab this pack. Now, it is Inspiring Week, so you do want to be careful. Every uh, once in a while, one of the champions that gets picked here will actually do like a cast, um, so you want to make sure the Inspiring is taken care of. But at the same time, this um, the archer that's in this pack actually does a lot of damage to things, right? It it actually targets randomly. It doesn't have a normal threat taggle table, so it'll just target anything. So uh, definitely watch out for that. It can be stunned once the Inspire is out of there, um, but you want to watch out for that. Now, the champion that got picked here is the one that is kind of like the tank buster one. Um, there's two options here. There's this one that does like this... Uh, you know, channeled attack on the tank, and then there's another, w and then he'll leap away, right? And then there's the other one that throws a sword that spins, and then he'll, like, do a whirlwind that you have to get out of. This one is a tank. This ability right here. You actually have a couple choices. You can do what I just did, and it's actually just a melee attack, right? He channels it, and it's like a melee. It's kind of like Fist of Fury, right? So if you're in melee, you're going to get hit by it. You can just she torpedo away or roll away. Or you can use a defensive. So lots of options. Uh, here I'm using a defensive. Uh, but I normally don't pull this other pack. Sometimes I like to get it started uh, to where it's active. Uh, my healer decided he wanted to pull it here. Not a bad idea. I mean, we're at 40% on the other mob. We're going to have to kill this one. Might as well kill them together. Not a big deal. Just wasn't what I was expecting. Um, but there's no problem in doing that, right? Um, I've actually done before where I leave him and I will come back at the very end and get him. I've also done where, like... As I'm running to the next pack, I'll have someone misdirect me and pull it, and we'll deal with the ghosts and this guy together. Um, so there's lots of different options. This one's actually probably the safest for the fact that it's Grievous and uh, Inspiring Week, um, and the fact that we've pre-set up before the dungeon that we're going to be skipping the Archer pack that would come after that one. Now remember, we're not going farther into the Dueling Wing here, uh, so we're just going to finish these off, and then we're going to move on to the portal wing that has those ghosts at the beginning. Now, both of these happen to be casters, right? So I'm just trying to get one of the casts. I'm still watching out for that fury attack on myself. Um, if one of the casts is missed, as long as you have a hunter, rogue, druid in your group, all that has to happen is you just suit them up. It just puts an enrage on them. Um, and honestly, the enrage doesn't even hurt that much. Interrupt. 
but obviously these mobs do take a little bit of time. Uh, so, you know, just kind of taking care of them here. This is wasting so much time, kind of, a little bit. Uh, maybe not. Pascal isn't sure if this is a time save, time waste. Wasn't expecting it to pull this. Again, wasn't really expecting it to come through in this. But, is what it is. So, now that this pack is low, we're going to go ahead and move over towards the portal wing. I call it that because you use the portals to teleport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'll notice I'm not using Cheat Torpedo to go over here. Um, I like to set up, as soon as I get into this area, Transcendence, and then use a defensive. Grab these here. There's inspiring, so I'm going to CC this. Unfortunately, it ends up breaking somehow. I'm really not sure how. Must have been closer than I thought. And then generally I'll teleport back. Here I just... She torpedoed, but normally I'll use that to kind of give myself options. I missed one here, so I'm going to grab it. Normally the relics come. If the relics come, I like to kill either Ur for the extra DPS and survival, or Woe. Woe is nice because then you can pull all these little souls here, shackled souls, and the next pack, and the other members of your group won't get targeted because they can't be seen because they're still stealth. You'll be in combat, but they won't. Um, so Woe's nice there, plus it gives you a damage reduction, which is always nice on Inspiring Week. So, I'm going to CC that mob, go ahead and grab these, keep myself now, because they're not this. I like to keep myself semi-seen by these mobs, so they target me instead of the ads. Or, sorry, the other members of my group, unfortunately, the Warlock got picked and insta-died, yeah. so that's sad. Since it's later, we went ahead and grabbed Ur here. Now, you'll notice I threw down a ring apiece. That's really nice in this pack because generally they'll try to come close to you, right? So it stops them from casting. Like, it just keeps on interrupting them. Um, and then there I just use Leg Sweep. That's really nice. If I hadn't parried the Inspired Mob, you could use Paralyze there. You can use Interrupts, whatever. I go ahead and grab this pack now and grab the other one. Uh, it doesn't matter because this guy doesn't do the cast, but we do want to prioritize the Shackled Soul here because it does still cast, so you'll see I set it focused so I can just interrupt it whenever it comes up, um, or Leg Sweep or whatever. So, during this, when the Soul Storm is going off too, uh, Shamans tend to have a better time with this, but if you've got a Priest in your group, definitely make sure that you're watching out for the rest of your group. Um, you can definitely help out by vivifying. Uh, lots of times I'll put that either on the healer themselves or on the hunter. Hunters are always in danger of dying. Um, you'll see here I hover over and I start healing the hunter and the lock. Um, again, because we want to make sure that the shamans doesn't have to use his cooldowns here because the next portal guardian is generally a little bit tougher because they've got the two casters with it, right? So uh, try to help them out. That way it helps you out later. Because if your group dies, you die, and bad things happen, you know? So, uh, in here, just go to the right. You don't need to go to the left. If you're going to skip more than I chose to skip in my route, you can go left and do some other pools. Um, but we're just going to skip the archer pack later, so still just going to go right here. Uh, my route does have us go right on both times. Um, with these, generally, you want to assign your party members to help out with kicks. You just need two melee kicks for each add here, so beforehand... Uh, I think it was the monk that said me and the healer would take care of the left ones, and then the monk and the hunter would take care of the rights, which is always nice, and then we have the warlock as the backup. Now here it's Inspiring Week. So, unfortunately the Bone Spike dude is inspired, so here I'm going to set up a Paralyze on it and then ring it away. Um, this is so that we can get interrupts on the other caster, right? We couldn't actually Paralyze the other caster because he's too close, right? So that's why I ring him away. Uh, here you want to do you do want to make sure you're getting as many interrupts as you can as the necrotic bolts. Those actually hurt quite a bit, especially on fortified grievous here. Um, but you especially don't want the volley going off. If you only have enough kicks to cover one, get the volley um, and just try to make sure that the other cast isn't going under either. So once that's dead, I can go ahead and pull the inspired mob back in, take care of it while we finish up the pearl guardian. Again, the only thing that needs kicked on here is the bone spear. Okay, it targets someone, it'll most likely kill them. And one of the things to keep in mind with this is that if you use Paralyze, Ring of Peace, Leg Sweep to stop the Bone Spike, it's just going to recast it. It's not one of those ones where it's like, okay, it started it, so it's over. It will recast it if it doesn't go through. So uh, you do have to use an actual Interrupt, otherwise it will just keep casting it. Now, since we are planning on skipping the Archers here, 
Uh, we are going to do all of these bone spear dudes, the bone magnuses, during this pack. Ideally, we kill Ur. I marked Ur, but the the interrupts here are pretty important. It doesn't matter which mob you kill here, whether it's Ur, Vi, or Woe. Uh, Ur is nice because you get extra damage reduction. You get, or not extra damage reduction, you get some healing. You get CDR reduction, which is nice for the interrupts. They killed Vi. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, but as soon as the first bone spike dudes are dead, move right over to the next set. And as soon as these ones are dead, again, I'm going to move over to the other ones. Now here we kind of blew our interrupts at the same time. Shaman didn't trust me for some reason. Uh, so here I'm going to have to kind of do some some other things. You're going to see I'm going to use a ring here because neither of us have our interrupt up. Uh, and then it comes back up, still don't have it, so I'm going to leg sweep. Okay. Now notice it casts spear back to back to back there until we had an interrupt for it. Uh, so just be careful with that. And unfortunately, someone else uh, leg swept when I went to interrupt, so it didn't count the interrupt as going off, and the monk died for it. So tried to help. Sometimes things go wrong, but is what it is. Uh, and then still, see here, we can still about 30%, so just going to pull in the last bone magnuses and take care of these. Now again, if you're not doing a skip on the archers, you don't have to do these two extra two sets. Um, but if you are going to skip the archers, these two two sets will make up the percent that you're going to... Uh, need for skipping the archer pack back in that door. Avoid. Now, this last one's kind of kind of sketch, right? Um, it's not really easy to turn, discern left or right here, since they said left or right to begin with, so I just say hey, I'm going to get the bone magnus, just to let them know. Uh, kicks are super important here. Again, you've got another one that does the necrotic bolts. Um, and then a volley, and then you've got the bone spike guy who does bone spike and something that does like literally negative damage. So only ever get the interrupts on the bone spike. Uh, if you only have enough to get the volley, get the volley. If you have more than that, you really do get each necrotic bolt as many as you can. Um, the volley guy who casts volley, that's one where you can use, you can see I can just use ring a piece there. It won't cast volley again. Okay, so as soon as it starts to cast, it's used its cooldown, it won't do it again. So you're free to para, ring, um, leg sweep, that won't matter. Um, so it's really the bone spear that you want to make sure you're using interrupt on. The the volley, you can use the other things that you have available to. And then another big thing that you can see right when I got in here, I actually set down Transcendence. This is important because sometimes I've had it where I'm behind the guy who's doing the wins and it still knocks me off for some reason. Don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm considered in his hitbox. I don't know. But it's always safer. Put down the Transcendence. That way, if you get knocked off for whatever reason, you can just instantly teleport back. I've had it save my life more times than I can count, and it only costs a global to put it down. So uh, definitely recommend putting that down in the middle just to make sure you're safe. Now, this boss, uh, Fortified and Grievous, kind of hurts. Uh, same thing with Tyrannical. So, if you don't have a second dispel in form of a Destro Warlock that can use their Imp to do the extra dispel, um, or a Priest that can, you know, mass dispel to help, um, one of the things that I find super helpful to do is just help out people who get the, uh, the dot on them and use Vivify as well. Okay? Uh, generally, as the tank, you're not in danger here. The only time you're in danger is if you somehow get away from the boss and start the cast. Don't let that happen. Um, but as far as like everything else, like if the dot goes on you, just defensive yourself. Um, and you'll see here that I'm regularly throwing out my uh, heal that I inspect into because I never use uh, Tiger Palm. Um, but I'm also making sure, and I'm using that whenever people come out of the grippy hands because they take damage still. Um, and then I'm also watching that if someone gets low, I'm ready to hit them with a the vivify. You can see the lock got kind of low there. I vivified him. Probably should have hit the monk instead, but he did use a defensive, so he's nice. And here you can see I'm going to miss. Man, where is your imp, bro? Uh, but I think what happened there is the, uh, the lock dispelled at the same time that the priest, uh, not priest, but shaman did. Um, lock their imp dispel doesn't work like a normal one. If they use it, it's used. It doesn't matter if it was accessible or not. So keep that in mind. If you're a warlock, make sure you're going second. You know, make sure the, uh, the healer dispels first and then go. Uh, but again, I'm just, you know, we have the dumbest deaths so far. Putting out DPS, laughing at my DPS that are dying. 
Um, and again, just watching people's health, making sure I have enough energy to vivify. Uh, you know, if anyone gets in danger here. So again, you can see I'm throwing out chi waves to help heal. Right. Watching people who are low, throwing out vivifies just to help. Again, this normally unfortified, this boss isn't too bad, but because it's grievous, it does add that extra danger. Plus, it's a 25. So anything you can do to help the healer, if it's one global, right? Vivify is a global, costs 25 energy. Why not do it? Again, if your DPS stay alive, they're going to do a lot more damage than you do. Right? That's how I look at it. It's also one of the big reasons why I prefer playing Monk over something like DK. I know DK is, uh, has some utility with it, and it does quite a bit of DPS, but like, I like that I have that extra utility of Leg Sweep, Ring of Peace, I can help heal. Right, I can paralyze literally anything except for something that's immune to CC. Um, so that's one of the big things that I like about monks. So really use that versatility. I know it's it's not, you know, something you have to do to help by vivifying and help heal, but really it can make the difference between succeeding in a key and the key being over. So if it's something you can practice, definitely definitely get in the hang of doing it on something like this boss specifically. Now, my group has a lot of interrupts. We've got a Survival Hunter, we've got Windwalker Monk, we've got myself, we've got a Rust of Shaman. So in this next pack, I'm going to pull everything. Well, it is Inspired Week, though. So I'm going to paralyze the Inspired first, and then I'm going to pull everything. So I'm going to count on uh, watching one of the jumpy guys that does the withering uh, big AoE that does damage to everybody and puts a, a dot that reduces their cooldowns, right? Uh, so I'm going to watch one of those, and then... I'm going to try to make sure that I have Leg Sweep or Ring of Peace whenever the uh, Meat Shield is coming out from the other guy. So Withering Discharge still going off. You can see I used Ring of Peace to stop that from going off as well. You can also use things like Clash here, which is nice. Um, again, you have to be more than five yards away, though. Um, and as soon as the Withering guy dies, uh, we're safe. We can pull in this other one. Uh, obviously, we still have the, the shield that can go off, but that guy just died, so we're safe here. And this guy's got, like, no health, so as soon as you pull him, it's, it's easy to kill. But not as easy to kill as when you have everything there where you don't have the priority. So another pack with Inspired here. I'm going to go ahead and Paralyze and just pull the other ones over. Uh, really on Inspired Week, CCing is your friend, so again, being a monk is super nice because you can basically paralyze anything that has Inspired on it. So, take care of the Witherings here. You know, whenever we can stun uh, the Butcher to make sure that he is not healing, that's ideal. Uh, but it's not as big of a deal as, you know, making sure that the the cast is going off from the other side. So, as soon as the next Withering goes off and we get kicked, I'm going to pull in the other one because it's got like a 10 second cooldown on it. So I can go ahead and pull this guy in, keep him just far enough away, just in case, uh, and then again start watching this one. Make sure you are using your utility to dispel yourself as well. Um, they put a plague on you, or disease, um, as well as if the withering goes off, that can be dispelled as well from yourself, so just make sure you're doing that. We take less damage, you do more damage. It's just smart, only costs a global, and I think it's like 15 energy. I'm actually not sure how much energy it costs. It costs something. But, as soon as these are dead, uh, generally, I like to, as an engineer, use my invis belt just to start going. Make sure that I don't have a whirlwind going. You can see I did that here. Unfortunately, it failed, so I'm going to go ahead and long way. Um, ideally, make sure if you can invis belt that I have a, a weak order that tells people invis belt active or invis bot active. Uh, saves about three seconds from you having to type it right, uh, as well as sometimes people are dumb and they don't realize that you went invisible and that's how you're running through mobs, and if they run through it, they're going to kill them. So, again, Paralyze here. Take care of the Withering guy. Unfortunately, someone breaks the, the CC. That's actually super unfortunate, because that Withering is, is really bad. So, uh, Ring of Peace, someone trapped it, still went off, so I'm just going to try to grab it and pull it away. We really don't want that Withering going off. It does so much damage, plus it puts a reduction on you to where you can't do as much damage. Unfortunately, it goes off here. Uh, so I went ahead and dispelled, dispelled the Warlock right there. Uh, unfortunately, the Monk isn't dispelling himself. I don't know why. He's doing less damage. 
Uh, I'm just getting things under control. Just Holy shit! Myself. And as soon as you're safe here, generally once you've got one mob left, you're pretty good to either pull in the jumpers that are behind this big fat uh, a bomb here, or you can pull in the a bomb. Here I choose the a bomb first. If you do the jumpers first, I wait till he's padding away, right? And then I just chi torpedo over, spinning crane kick, and then chi torpedo back. That'll get them all to kind of jump towards your friends. You can take care of those, and then do the a bomb after. Here we're doing a bomb first. If you do the jumpers before the A-bomb, it's actually nice because you can do A-bomb and then take the two last mobs through there and pull them right into the boss. They don't really do anything, so um, they just do a little bit of damage, but most of yourself's avoidable as long as you're getting interrupts. Uh, but here, again, we went A-bomb was closer, so we're doing A-bomb first, and then we'll do the, the jumpers with the two other mobs. I would generally wouldn't pull the jumpers into the boss. Just one more thing to have to interrupt and have to go wrong with the hooks, so generally, if you're going to do the jumpers later, make sure the jumpers are dead, and then you can pull the rest in. Um, but if you like to live dangerously, you can do that too, but just know it's it's a little bit less safe. And for those of you who don't know, that A-bomb shoots things out its front and its back. Some people seem to think it doesn't come out the front, they think it only comes out the butt, or some people think it only comes out the front and doesn't come out the butt. No, he got, he's got the flu. He's coming out both ends, so definitely just be careful with that. Uh, rule of thumb, you take way less damage from standing in the goo on the floor, not that goo, but the goo that he does, uh, than you do getting hit by the frontal, or the backle, if you want to call it a backle. Here, I was going to pull these two into the boss, but unfortunately my shaman threw down a... going to pull into the boss, but... Whatever. Shaman threw down his uh, totem, so just took care of it. Didn't really matter. <clears throat> but this boss, really pretty easy. Uh, just make sure that you have cell brews or any of the other defensives ready to go for whenever he's going to hit you. Generally, the only ones that I worry about are like the ones when the chain is coming through. He seems to do that that frontal right there as the chains are coming a lot of time after the first one. So just be ready to have like a defensive for that one. The other ones, I generally just let hit me and then heal myself back up with expel harm. And again, I am talking about the hateful strike there. So this is the one where the hateful is coming out during the chains. This is the one where you'll see me use cell brew. Didn't actually use cell brew there, whatever. Uh, but generally I'll use cell brew there or use one of my trinkets um, to eat the hit. Because that's where your your healer's moving around more, right? They're not going to be able to heal you, right? We've always got that stagger going. My stagger's at 50%, so I'm always taking 50% less of a hit. Um, but just be ready to heal it back. Always expel harm after a big hit, right? The other thing here um, that you kind of want to do is try to make sure these adds are kind of being controlled on where they're at. You don't want to be getting gripped into the boss here. Um, and you don't want to be getting gripped into that poison that's on the ground, it, it slows you a lot. So, uh, generally you can use things like Leg Sweep to stop them right before they die to keep them close to the current puddle. You can ring a piece to move them out of the way. Uh, but generally you want to hold the boss. You can see I moved here because they just spawned poison. I want to have this area clear so that when we get gripped in right here, we're easy, we can move, we're not being, like, slowed and, you know, in that chance of being hit by the hooks. My healer does get hit by a hook. This is another boss. Just be ready if that happens. I didn't do it here. I should have saw that he got hit. Uh, I should have been ready to vivify him because as soon as they get pulled out, they're taking lots of damage. But the ring outside where that like light green is at, it actually makes it so that you can't cast. You're silenced. So just be ready if someone ever gets hooked to be ready to heal them, especially if it's the healer. Here, ended up being okay. He had onk, so he just onk. But again, you can see I'm using Ring Piece there to move him away. I'm pulling away from the poison so we're not slowed when the grip comes in. And again, every time those adds spawn, I am trying to just taunt one of them and then either cake smash the other or just have Spinning Crank Kick going so that I can, you know, grab some snap and throw it on them. Avoid. 
Triple strike. Okay, so right now we've got like 12 and a half minutes. This is normally, if this was the case, I'd normally kind of be a little worried. Fortunately, though, my healer earlier grabbed an extra mob. Um, so we have one last, you know, champion to deal with, which is actually kind of nice. So we're actually going to, in this pass, the archers. We're going to deal one champion, boss, pull the pack that's left upstairs, other boss. So 12 minutes, we're actually looking pretty good on time here. All right, 12 minutes to do a mini boss. Yo, pass Kyle. Boss. I already just talked about this. Oh, Come down, boss. So with this pack, if we're going to pull this, generally I like to CC it and then pull uh, LOS up the stairs. Here we are skipping it, though. So I am going to CC it so it stops walking um, and then activate my invis belt. You do want to be careful. I didn't know this ahead of time. Was one of the guys told me here. Um, but you don't want to pull this next pack until everyone's passed because once you attack the relics, it actually breaks everyone's stealth and viz, stuff like that. Um, so just be careful that you wait to engage this pack until Avoid. things are good to go. Now, this mob that we got for the champion mostly just does tank damage, right? It's the one that does the AOE circle in the middle and just does damage to you. Um, so it's pretty safe. Avoid. The shield guy, and then there's one other, I don't know what the fuck his name is. Um, but the shield guy will throw out, like, a red circle at someone, right? And then does a stomp. On Fortify Weeks, if you get the shield guy, please be ready to help your healer. With Vivifies, whatever you need, whoever gets targeted by the red circle, you want to immediately be ready to Vivify them, because right after they get hit, the stomp comes out, and if they aren't healed, um, they're going to die. And I know you're thinking, that's a healer mechanic. Why am I worried about it? Well, again, if your DPS dies, especially after you just did a skip, they're not getting back through. So, help them out. Make sure they don't die. It doesn't hurt you to throw out a 5 or 25 energy, you know, once every 10 seconds. Okay. So, uh, be ready if that happens Avoid. with this one. You're pretty much just moving out of the, the whirlwind, right? And then just making sure to use a defensive whenever it debuffs you. So. Now, next boss is super important. Okay? We, we normally like to kill Ur when we're doing bosses. This is one boss you don't want to kill Ur. Generally, right when the time that Ur dies, it's right as someone, like the two people are being sent down the duel, and then they get healed, and they can't kill each other for 9 seconds. Like, they're literally at full health for 9 seconds, and then they have to kill themselves. So please, make sure you're killing Vi here. A lot of times you'll tell people, kill Vi, and they don't listen. So if you have Touch of Death, I save Touch of Death, and I make sure that I kill that Relic, so that Vi is the one up. Okay? Super important. It literally can end your run to kill Ur here and have Ur be killed at the wrong time. So just be safe, kill Vi. A little less damage up front, but it saves you a lot of time. The other thing is, that you'll notice is that I generally save my cooldowns to be used on the banners whenever two of the DPS are down dueling. So right here you can see DPS were down dueling. I saved. Uh, my carrion weapons of order that spawns uh, you know one of my oxes for that banner while they are down. Now the next one, all the DPS are going to be up, so I don't need the defensive there or like, the extra you know, offensive cooldown. Um, we're going to have three DPS on it, so that flag's not a big deal. Uh, but generally, you'll see that I use like my DOS scale trinket. Then I'll use my other uh, shield trinket and make it so that it explodes on the banner um, when they're down instead of when they're up, right? Just little things you can do. Same thing, touch a death towards the end. Save it for when the two other DPS are down so that you can help out with that flag so that you're not being slowed and more chance of dying. So here you see I have scale coming up. I've got my Aegis as well trinket. Two DPS are down. I'm going to go ahead and use the scale right there. Just does a big burst of damage. Also gives me a shield. Um, it's like 20k. You know? Might be a little bit more than 20k. Like 30k. Um, but it's enough that hopefully we're going to kill this flag before a crush goes out. Avoid. 
other than that, you will notice from time to time, I might throw out vivifies on this boss as well. Um, especially, like, right after, or right before, like, the, the stomp, or right after the stomp goes out, when he lands in the middle there. Um, again, just to help out the healer. Honestly, it's not that big a deal as long as no one's going to get hit by anything else. Because uh, there's not really anything else you should take damage from, unless you somehow get stuck on one of the sides. Now boss is low enough, this is where you can generally see, hey, not really a reason to kill the flag, even though they're down. I do move it over there, um, but I am staying on the boss. He's only got 160k, the flag's got like 300, so just kill the boss. And again, that's where I marked him with Skull, so that my other DPS knew. Don't worry about the flag, it doesn't fucking matter. So, uh, big thing here. We've got three mobs left in the boss. It is safe to pull those mobs with the boss. Once the caster said. <clears throat> okay. So the other okay. one's doing rages that can be as soothed. Long as nobody does something fucking stupid as hell. Um, even though there's inspired here, I go to CC it. Told hands down, I'm a nuts take and good shit. <laughs> so the monk whispered me and was like, "Oh, good shit, man. You're a great tank." And I was like, "That's hilarious." And the reason why is because he declined me like three times over 15 minutes before he accepted me. So, kind of funny. But anyways, here, generally I just wait to make sure the caster's dead. Here we are kind of CCing, fearing, moving that other inspired away. It actually isn't a huge deal on this one because like the only thing you're actually worried about is when he puts the buff on one of the other two players, uh, NPCs. And, however, that can just be dispelled through Blood Elf. You can see I just Blood Elf it there. Your... Warlock can dispel it if they're Destro. Hunter can dispel it. Priest can dispel it. Lots of things can dispel it. So it's not really a big deal. But generally, I'll wait till the caster's dead and then pull into the boss with whatever's remaining. Just be ready to use a defensive if it's needed. Uh, here you can see I use Weapons of Order, bring out my Ox. Just give me a little bit more damage and defensive together. And again, uh, if you're at full health and there's not other things going on, when the Scythe hits you, it's actually okay to let it just hit you and just expel harm and purifying brew. Uh, generally, you're not going to die from that. If you're anything lower than full health, or maybe you have a lot of stagger at that time, definitely do try to make sure you're using Cell Brew, Fort Brew, one of your defensive trinkets if you have it. Dampen Harm if you took that talent. I don't ever take Dampen Harm. I'm going to be honest. I haven't used Dampen Harm or Tiger Palm. Oh, was scary. Like, I almost got pulled right into that earth. Ever. I used Tiger Palm, I think, through like when I was first learning Monk Tank, uh, up through like a 10 key, and then I was just like, I'm this pointless to use this ability. One second on your Brutus doesn't actually matter. So. You'll actually do more damage and get more threat with Spinning Crane Kick. So You'll actually notice I use Spinning Crane Kick on single target. It's actually more effective mm. than using your Tiger Palm. If you're a, if you're a, uh, running Necro, that might not be the case because uh, you do get extra reduction when your, uh, your Necro ability is out on targets. So there it's a little bit more worth it with Tiger Palm, but... I generally run Kyrian unless we don't have a Necro for Top or Plaguefall, so I don't really ever worry about using Tiger Hall. You'll notice that I am ready to, I just use Ring of Peace to knock in these Deathstalkers. You'll also notice I like to use things like Clash, I will use my DOS Trinket, I'll use Leg Sweep, uh, generally just whatever you can do to get those things in together or stop them from casting, um, try to be together. If someone runs far away, be ready to Clash or Ring a Peace it in so that one last thing hitting people as you gotta go through. Oh, scary. That was scary. I just almost she torpedoed into a boar. Wouldn't actually kill you as a tank. Unless you're like half health, probably. Uh, but obviously not something you should try to do, obviously. Avoid. 
But yeah, so the rest of this phase, honestly, is just keeping it out of the AoE that's coming from, you know, the ghost dudes. Uh, making sure to pull it over so that the boars aren't coming right at you, you're out in the middle. And, you know, dodging this frontal. Other than that, this, this boss actually isn't too hard, as long as you can stay together and, um, you know, take care of these little spirits. But that's pretty much it. If you have any questions about this dungeon, how I did something, why I did something that I did, make sure to leave me a comment. Uh, I do respond to those, anything that comes, whether it's positive or negative. If you think I did something wrong that I could do better, let me know. Uh, I'm always looking to improve, so. Easy. Oh, eight points? Get Yo. fucked. For real. Uh, so yeah, leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm here for you. Check out the route down below in the comment. Um, and anyways, I'll catch you in the next one. See you guys.